So what, what exactly is dysphagia? Dysphagia is painful swallowing. That's what it means. It's painful swallowing, which happens from anterior surgery, from retracting the, the trachea and the esophagus, and from the tube being in the, the trachea in the first place. That process, it takes several hours to do an operation in the front. So the longer the throat is retracted, the more likely it is that you're gonna have a sore throat when you wake up. Dysphonia, that's actually difficulty talking. And there's also hoarseness, temporary and permanent hoarseness. Those are all risks of an anterior surgery. Usually the hoarseness happens when that nerve that powers the vocal cord on each side is damaged. Usually if it's damaged on one side, the other one works just fine. But it's very important, especially if you're having another surgery through the front, that your surgeon actually evaluates the vocal cords because even a careful surgeon can do an operation and that vocal cord nerve may stop working. So if it's not working on this side, and then I go to this side to avoid the scar from this side, and this one stops working, you're gonna talk like this the rest of your life, which would not be a good thing, right? So for me, what I do anytime I'm doing an anterior surgery revision, I always send my, doc my patients to a doctor called an ear, nose, and throat specialist because I want them to look with a camera at the vocal cord vibration to tell me that they're both working. So it tells me, do I have to go to one side? So what that would mean is, if the vocal cord on the left is no longer working, I go back to that same side because there's no chance of injuring that nerve. The last thing I wanna do if this nerve is no longer working is go to this side and then we lose that nerve and then you have that problem talking. So there's some little subtle things that are very important that we can do to help protect you and, and make sure that your surgery has minimal risk of complications. One of the things that we do see after surgery in the front of the neck is number one, we always see a sore throat. Why is the throat sore? Well, when we make an incision in the front and we retract the esophagus and trachea to the side, we actually follow this interval to get to the front of the spine. The retraction on the esophagus and trachea creates stress across the, those tissues. In addition to that, there's a tube, the endotracheal tube that goes into the trachea that allows you to breathe during surgery. When you have that pressure on the inside and the retractors on the outside, you can probably bet you're gonna have a sore throat. But what we don't wanna see is we don't wanna see damage to the nerves that provide vibration of the, of the vocal cords. And one of the things we don't wanna see is we don't, we don't wanna see a life-threatening complication where this esophagus is torn. So when these surgeries are done, there's really, really dangerous real estate that we're working around, as simple and straightforward as that surgery seems. There are some bad things that can happen. There are also arteries on the side of the spine that can get torn even in the hands of the most capable surgeon. One of the things that's really important about surgery is, is that there are potentials for complications, even in the hands of the most careful and well-trained surgeons because they're human. But what does that surgeon do to handle that complication? That's a very important question. Do they have the training to get them out of a sticky situation? There are arteries that actually come into the disc space. They dive in like that. We call that a tortuous artery. Normally the arteries that go to the back of the brain go straight through a hole in the bone. But some people, their anatomy is different and it comes in and out of the disc space. So even doing a very careful disc removal, you can cut or tear that artery. And in the rare case that that happens, your surgeon has to be capable of stopping that bleeding. And it is not easy. It's a very dangerous surgery. Patients can stroke, patients can die. There have been cases in, in the history where patients haven't made it through surgery from that complication, even with capable surgeons. So even if an anterior surgery seems basic and straightforward, every surgery is serious. And you wanna to go to a surgeon who, in the worst scenario, they can handle the complication. Um, at the end of the day, if, if, they're, ca if they're careful and, and they're capable, even a complication is usually something that you can get through and get around. The other thing that's very important is that when we're doing these operations, when we have swelling in our throat, which is 100% gonna happen when we do an anterior surgery, is that after surgery, I tell my patients, what you eat and how you eat is really important. You don't wanna eat big, chunky pieces of meat. You don't wanna eat pieces of bread. You don't wanna swallow a giant pill. You wanna kind of break up your food a little bit smaller. You wanna start with softer foods. You wanna always have a drink around for the first couple of weeks. All of those things help wash any pill down or food that may get stuck as a result of swelling. Rarely 
when people have a very hard time swallowing even liquids, we'll give them a couple of doses of steroids. Steroids are very similar to anti-inflammatories. In fact, they are anti-inflammatories on steroids. They're like a massive anti-inflammatory and they inhibit inflammation. So for that reason, like I said before, I don't like to use steroids after surgery because they inhibit inflammation, which may inhibit diffusion. But sometimes you give a couple of doses just to get people over the swelling from their throat, especially with a complicated surgery in the front in the last many hours.